Yo guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another episode of Korea Mode. Bit of an interesting introduction today because I have some news. Now, if you follow me on Twitter, it's at DocLanders. Uh, you would have seen on Wednesday afternoon as I was loading up the save to play through some Korea Mode more. Um, I noticed that my last save file had disappeared. Yeah, I save my files very frequently, as you can probably tell by the way I have backup saves as well for my two main career modes. Um, my save file had gone. And it reverted back to an old save file I had on what I believe was the Monday and not the Wednesday, uh, not the Tuesday, sorry. Uh, so yeah, my last save file would have been on the Tuesday night. And that of course came after our win over Napoli and of course the transfer deadline day drama, replacing Quebec with Stanley Young, David Fratesi and Eddie Salcedo. If you saw the last episode, you saw all those things happen. Now again, I save very frequently and save all the time to make sure this sort of stuff doesn't happen. Yet for some reason, the save file was not there. Now, anyone out there that is better with technology than me can tell me if I'm talking complete nonsense, which is quite possible. But I think what happened is, on the Tuesday night, after I completed the last two save files, you would have seen the last two episodes in, um, they weren't uploaded to the cloud. Nowadays, with PlayStation 5, the save files go onto the cloud and they also sync with the console. So my understanding is on Tuesday night, they didn't synchronize with the cloud. So when I reloaded on Wednesday, ordinarily you're notified of a conflict between save files in the cloud and save files on your console. But I wasn't notified of the conflict and I assume what happened is the PlayStation assumed I would prefer the save file in the cloud and not the one on the console even though the one in the cloud comes from a previous date and time. Does that make sense? That's the only thing I can think possibly happened there. So once I realized that I'd lost all those games, I'd lost the transfer drama, I was thinking, I don't really know what to do here because the last two episodes that I made essentially hadn't happened at this point in this save file. So I was really unsure on what to do. So what I tried to do is match up what happened in the last two episodes in this previous save file as I went along. So that would mean that Quebec would need to be sold to Wolves. I did it. I managed to get into Molyneux for £80 million, the exact same fee. So didn't get any more money there. And also the three signs we made, Stanley Young coming in from Brentford, back in the save. Uh, David Fratesi coming in from Spezia. And also Eddie Salcedo coming in from Athletic Bilbao as well. I tried to get all three of those players back in exchange for Quebec going to Wolves. And thankfully, as you'll see throughout the course of this introduction to today's episode, that's exactly what happened. So I, I have to say, this took a long time to do to make sure I could get Quebec back to his original destination of Wolves. I didn't want to sell him anywhere else I wanted to be Wolves because that's where we sold into uh, in the last two episodes and I wanted to make sure the three players we got were the exact same three players again so I didn't give myself like a, a new 86 rated center R for example to replace Quebec but instead make the exact same three signings for around the same amount of money as well the transfer fees might have been a million or two off the original fees we put in in the last episode but even so they're around the same fee so we basically raised the exact same amount of money for Quebec and then got the same three players back in as well now as for the results with the games I knew I wasn't going to be able to get the score lines exactly right I knew I was going to get the, get the, uh, the results uh, perfect with the other teams around the league as well. That was going to be impossible to have the exact same league table as before. But what I did is I did my best to make sure that we would have around the same goal difference as what we ended with in the last episode even though in the Serie A, of course, goes head-to-head -head before goal difference. We'd have the same opponent in the cup semi-final. That is Napoli. The other tie now, however, is Palma versus Fiorentina, not Palma versus Genoa. There would have been the other tie. And also for Gutierrez as well. In the last episode, he had 22 goals in 23 games. I made sure he's got the exact same goal record as well. What I didn't want to do is have Gutierrez have like 25, 26 goals, because as we know, he's chasing the record in the Serie A. I didn't want to give myself an unfair advantage. So he's got the exact same amount of goals as you would have had in the last episode as well. That in itself took a while to make sure I could do it. So we've got the exact same team, the exact same player ratings, Gutierrez has the exact same amount of goals. And the other thing I want to point out is that Theo Hernandez, as we know, got an injury a couple episodes ago and was done for three months. Of course, that game in this save file didn't happen. So because of that, what I've done is I've put Theo Hernandez in curfew, if you will, and we won't be able to use him until the 1st of May. Now, ordinarily, he would have came back around this time, around late April. So maybe 
you could have made the Milan derby and Gennaro away as well. But I'm not going to give myself that advantage. May the 1st is when we can use Theo Hernandez again. That's the earliest time I'll be able to use the French left back. As for the tables, like I said, I couldn't get them perfect. But this is how it now looks. Juve instead of five points behind. So I've given myself a two-point deficit, if you will. Because it would have been seven. Now it's five. That's the two-point penalty. Inter also still 12 points behind, like originally. And Atalanta have drawn a little bit closer as well. I didn't want to give myself an unfair advantage playing through to get the footage back. So we've got the exact same team, exact same ratings. Hernandez is out for around the exact same amount of time. And again, in the league tables now as well, uh, Juve's gap on us has been cut from seven to five. So I've given myself a two-point penalty on the old lady because there's no way it would have been fair for me to come back and say, oh, we were seven points clear, now we're 15 points clear. No, of course not. So yeah, I've made sure that Juve actually have got a little bit closer to us uh, than in the last episode, just to make it fair because otherwise, I mean, it just... It was so frustrating because again, I'm not, I'm not really a techie kind of guy. I got to be honest, man. I'm, I'm really, really poor with technology. It's the only thing I can assume that happened. Um, you know, the, the save file didn't get uploaded to the cloud. And again, ordinarily on PlayStation now, you get notified if there's a conflict of data, and then you can decide what, uh, what data you want to go from. You know, what save data you access, either the one in the console or the one in the cloud, and then whichever one you choose overwrites the other one. But I didn't get notified of that that data conflict. They just assumed I'd prefer the one in the cloud, even though that came from a great camera angle, even though that came from an earlier date, which is so frustrating. And I do want to apologize for that, guys, as well, because, you know, I, I always say I believe in transparency and authenticity and, like, explaining exactly what happened. And, you know, what's that, uh, what's that saying I've been saying a lot in my club and country save lately? Taking 100% responsibility and uh, holding yourself accountable. It's so frustrating because it really, like, uh, man, I saved the file as I'm playing through my career mode save and recording the footage to edit and work with for when I'm making the episodes all the time, practically before every single game. So the fact I lost two episodes and a whole night's worth of footage was so, so frustrating. I didn't lose the footage, but I lost the progress. So frustrating, but... One of those things, but I wanted to explain exactly what happened today, uh, just to show you that, you know, if you're going to get confused because the league tables are slightly different or something like that, um, no, that's what happened. And again, I tried to match it up as closely as I could. I knew it was going to be impossible to get the tables the exact same. But yeah, with Juve now cutting that gap from seven points to five, I thought that was fair to give myself a two-point penalty. And also as well, uh, Theo Hernandez out until the 1st of May. I'm not going to use him until then, I promise. It would not be fair. That injury, it might not actually have happened in this save file. But let's just say... I don't know, it's COVID protocols, he's in hotel quarantine, I don't know. We won't see Theo until the 1st of May. So there you go, guys, that's what happened. So, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Korean Boy. <laughs> this episode number 106. One of the most bizarre starts to an episode I've ever had. And taking on Napoli for the first game of today's episode uh, here in February. Coming to the back of the win against them on the weekend. Different scoreline to what we saw in the last episode, but still. Taking on Napoli, first leg of the Coppa Italia semi-final. Napoli not having the best of seasons this year so I certainly felt confident we took a very early big lead but Napoli drew back into the game made it 3-2 before Yuri Tielemann surely wrapped it up making it 4-2 and giving us the two goal cushion with a minute to go still up by two I wanted a fifth goal I've talked about it so often you know our, our game this season and really since we joined Milan has been built on offense defensively we've been so much tighter this year Mike is leading the way in the race for the golden glove but it's all about the offense yes our defense has improved but going forward is where we're at our best Sol Ramirez bags a brace in this game including right towards the end it was a big 5-2 victory against the lads from the Stadio San Paolo. Definitely deserved as well, no doubt about it. And now he's heading back to the second leg at Naples. Yeah, we hold a free goal lead and we've got a great chance of returning back to the Coppa Italia final. Got there last year, of course, were beaten by Inter and humbled by Inter. Do you remember we were 3-0 down before we scored those two late goals to make the scoreline respectable? The only thing we know now is that whilst the other semi-final ties change slightly, it's now Palmer vs Fiorentina and not Palmer vs Genoa. Well, we talked about it. After we made it through the round of 16 tie against Torino, both Inter and Juve fell at the first hurdle. No one would have seen that coming. I definitely didn't. So we became firm favourites to win this cup ever since the first knockout round after Juve and Inter were knocked out. And as we've gone all the way now to the semi-final, win the first leg 5-2, 90 minutes away from a place in the final once again. 
I've got to say, this season, we're leading the way in the race of Serie A. Now five points, not seven points clear of Juventus. And of course, into the Champions League last 16 against Barcelona as well. But our most winnable competition is without a shadow of a doubt, that Coppa Italia. I wanted to win a domestic honour this year after falling short last year to Inter. We got a goal in chance at a double this season. Still following that Spezia away from home back in the Serie A. Took a very early two goal lead. Uh, Gutierrez now has 23 goals to the season. I actually think I got it wrong as well. At the start of the episode, I said that Gutierrez, uh, of course, he had 22 goals uh, for this save far. Now, I think he actually had 23 um, in the last episode. Uh, after his goal against Napoli in the Serie A. I think that was goal number 23 for him. So I think I might have given him a one-goal deficit. I certainly gave him no more. Great camera angle, that's for sure. But uh, even so, whether he's a goal down than he should be or not, we're going to still go from where we are now, which is 23 goals now in the Serie A for Roberto. And he almost got an incredible goal to make up for a potential deficit, though. 56 minutes in. This would have been unbelievable. Chip ball into the middle. We're freeing it up. It's party time. And Roberto almost scores one of the goals of the Serie a scorpion kick just inside the area. Good stop though, kept it 3 0. But outside the game, we finished a big 3 0 victory there. One for Rob, one for Callum, and one for Moise as well as our two inside forwards link up with Rob to get us a comprehensive 3 0 win. And just real briefly on this, we've been talking about it this season as well. You see the stats there come full time and how we absolutely dominated possession. I really have changed my game, you know, my, my game up a lot this season and my play style up a little bit as well. You might see me going to quite early leads this season because right from the first whistle, I am on it. I am literally in attack mode right from the kickoff. And once I get myself an early lead, I, I kind of just conserve energy a little bit. And I'll be honest here, in the second half too, often just knock the ball around. Conserve energy because we know that fixed congestion is a real thing when you're trying to go far in Europe and compete for multiple honours in the same season. And also make sure that our players have less chance of getting injured going to 50-50 duels or running our legs towards the end of the game. And I've got to say, it's been largely beneficial for two reasons. Well, one for the reason I just mentioned there, making sure our players are fitter and fresher coming into midweek games, for example, but also as well, making sure that our defence seems a lot tighter. What was that Louis van Gaal philosophy? If we've got the ball, they can't hurt us. Well, yeah, at the moment, it's ringing true in this season in career mode. So our final game of today's episode, Lazio away at the Stadio Olimpico. Not having quite a season like I did last year when they finished in third place. We were tuning up in the first half, first and early goal, and then two man's heading in across to make it two after destiny whips one into the middle tuning up in Rome at this point practically in control once again knocking the ball around not looking to get too many more clear-cut chances with 14 minutes to go free kick for Lazio Oh my goodness, and it's one of the saves of this series from Mike. Anderson Taliska tries to bend one in, top bins. And look at this from Mike. Sounds us online, possibly could it be more of a liability putting our friend's shot stopper off. That is unreal from Mike, clawing it off the line right in the top corner to keep it at 2-0. I've talked about it. this season, he has upped his game and then some. And I think it's because of the contract extension and the manager support as well. I'm saying that's the case. 2-0 <laughs> AC Milan though and in stoppage time. What a way to wrap it up. As soon as the clock hit 90 minutes. Julius, super sub, Schneider. Practically every single goal this season has come off the bench. And that's one of the nicest. Chips the goalkeeper, makes it 3-0. And that was how the game would finish. Back-to-back 3-0 -back wins. Stats, you know, possibly a little bit deceptive. Thought we were in most control for the most part. But we'll take the win regardless. A brilliant save by Mike though from the free kick. My favourite part of the game. And as you can see, the point gap remains at five, not seven, with 13 games to go. There we are now, 15 clear of Inter. I think the three horse race has now become a two horse race. But that will end today's episode of Grima, guys. Do you want to say once again, sorry for what happened? I couldn't do anything about it, just a cloud sink issue. But regardless, hope you appreciate how much I tried to get the tables and the uh, form back to where it was. Hope you enjoyed the episode, regardless. So have a great day, guys. Much love to you all, and I'll see you for the next episode of Grima. Hopefully, with no more save file issues very soon.